Good morning and welcome to Whiting Church Online. I'm Pastor Chris Matthews and I'm glad that you're here today. Uh, you'll notice the last couple of weeks we've been doing things a little differently, not everything so polished, not that it was really polished before, um, but we had been recording uh, and editing and Patrick was uh, helping me put these together and doing a great job. Um, I've just felt that the last couple of weeks uh, it was important for me to come to you live uh, so we can talk and, and be together in, in the moment um, as 
as God is working in the world this day. So right now, uh, just for those who are wondering, I'm going live on my Facebook, and immediately following this, we'll post through the church's Facebook and upload to YouTube uh, so you can like and share and get this service out there uh, today. As I was driving up uh, to the church this morning, I saw a wonderfully manicured lawn, saw beautiful flowers, uh, and it was a joy to pull in to the church. So those of you who have been working on our lawn to keep, to keep up the beauty of our building, those of you who have been working in our building, sanitizing and, and getting everything together, uh, those of you who have been continuing to give, uh, continuing to pray, writing notes, uh, thank you for all the notes and cards. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, and your prayers. Uh, we're all in this together. And we are still the church. And God is with us. Normally on the first Sunday of the month, uh, we would gather and have Holy Communion. And I thought about uh, offering that this morning. Uh, but I've chosen to, to refrain this morning just because uh, next week I want to invite you to worship on the lawn. Uh, here at 1920 Clark Street, we're going to be gathering outside uh, weather permitting, uh, we'll be social distancing. I encourage you to wear a mask, although it's not required, uh, and be sharing together in worship and celebrating and partaking in the body and the blood, uh, Holy Communion. Again, June 14th, and that'll be here at the church at 10 a.m. I invite everyone to, to join us if you're able. And we will also be streaming uh, that service and having it available online. So I'm glad that you're here today. Whatever kind of week you've had, whether you woke up this morning and you're feeling grumpy or you feel joy because you hear the birds sing, if you're praying for our neighborhood, whatever you do, turn off the news this morning. Breathe, reflect, how is it? with our souls, and let's gather to worship. This morning as we open, I invite you to sing with me, if you know the words, Amazing Grace. <laughs>
Will you join me in prayer? Gracious and holy God, creator of all mankind, you breathed your breath and life was formed. You breathed your breath and the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. O oh God, breathe your breath like a mighty wind into your people today. God, breathe your Holy Spirit into each family, into each household. Cover our homes, cover our cities, cover our people. With your Holy Spirit, breathe, O oh breath of God. Help us to see you today. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to walk in your steps. Help us to serve with your hands. God, we know you are on the move. God, we know you are doing a new thing. Wake us up, God. Shake us up, God. Help us to hear your call on your people, to do justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly, as the prophet Micah says. May we be your people of love, your people of peace, your people that bring your light of hope in a world that is suffocating. So God, we pray for our brothers and our sisters. We pray for our community leaders. We pray for our police and government officials. Oh God, let us get on our knees and surrender and confess to you. For your word says, when we turn from our wicked ways, you will come and heal our land. Oh God, come and heal our land. Come and heal our people. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us. And as your church, as your followers, those of us who boldly will step out and call ourselves people of faith, Christians, help us, as Jesus has called, to bring healing. Help us to raise up those who are marginalized, those who are oppressed, those are who are in pain today, those who feel that they have nowhere to turn, oh God. May we all together share your love, walk humbly until every child knows that they are a child of God. Heal us, O oh God. Heal us. Forgive us of our sin. Forgive us when we have failed to love our brothers and our sisters. Forgive us when we have failed to listen. Forgive us When we live in a different kingdom than yours,
Help us to be reconcilers of your peace. Wherever we may go, may your light, your breath, your spirit shine. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who called all his brothers and sisters, no matter race, sexuality, identity, children of God. And we boldly proclaim in his name all people the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We start this morning where we left off last week. John Wesley's questions to the early Methodists, the early followers of this movement, of this expression of following Jesus. John Wesley said to the early United Methodists as they gathered, how is it with your soul? And so this morning, let's just take a moment as I ask us, as we're waking up and getting together, making breakfast, yelling at the kids, just take a moment, how is it with your soul? How have you experienced God's presence in your life this past week since we've last met? Where have you seen God's love working in the world? How is it with your soul? Last Sunday was Pentecost Sunday. We shared in the story from Acts 2 after Jesus' earthly ministry. He was gone. His disciples had, they had been doubting. They had been living in fear. They didn't know what was next. But Jesus said that I am I'm leaving an advocate with you who gives you authority. And when they were all together and the disciples were in one mind and of one accord, the Holy Spirit came. And all these people from all walks of life, from all different tribes and identities and countries and nations, speaking different languages, understood each other. They got it. And God's Spirit came and birthed the church. And that same Spirit is with us today. So what exactly is this church that was birthed on this Pentecost Sunday? What is exactly these called out ones, ecclesia, that we are called to be. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Matthew. Matthew 28, 16 through 20. And it is our mission statement of the United Methodist Church. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus, this was after his resurrection. Jesus came and said to them, All authority 
all authority in heaven on earth has been given to you, given, given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of Jesus Christ for all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the ends of the age. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus came and he gave his authority, his teachings, his spirit to his disciples, to those 11 gathered, those same that were gathered on that Pentecost day, those same where 2,000 were saved on that one moment, those same who we live out today. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Spirit came, and we're called simply to this, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. How do we live that out? Through the Spirit, through that God-breathed fire that came on that first Pentecost day, where all people of different minds, of different nations, of different understandings. They came together and they got it. They understood and the church was born. We started with how is it with your soul? You know, I've been part of this Methodist thing for a while and I understand and I have worked hard and I've taught classes and I've preached on making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And I'm trying to always refine that for myself. Well, how is God calling me to make disciples? How is God calling the folks I work with to make disciples? How am I called to share God's love at school in my neighborhood, in my church, how am I called to challenge our parishioners, our congregation, to go and make disciples for the transformation of the world? I don't always have the answers, and it's, you know, it's crazy out there right now. But God is doing something new, and God is bringing transformation. God is bringing revival and reformation to our lives, to our cities, to our nation, to our world. Now is the time, friends, for the people of God, the people of peace, the people of faith, those of us who follow Jesus, to stand up and boldly proclaim the love of Christ making disciples for the transformation of the world. So this morning, I just want to share with you about my soul, how I have seen God work since we last met. Schools have been meeting primarily online for the last several months. And this past week, we allowed students to come in and clean out their lockers. You could only come in a few at a time. You had to wear a mask. You had to check in. And staff and teachers were allowed to come in throughout the week uh, in small increments. And being able to sign in my students and seeing our, seeing our students in our school, something that just about being 
back together and seeing a familiar face. God was present. And with my colleagues, teachers, leaders, and staff, the conversations we had, just being together, God's spirit was present, knowing that we're not doing this life thing alone. Kids, students seeing familiar faces again. And some of them ask, well, we're, we're questioning what's going to happen next year. What will, what will school like look like next year? And I don't know those answers yet. We're still looking. And kids and parents have been asking those questions. And we don't know the answers together. But we're going to walk together and we're going to figure it out together. And we're not alone together. And God is there. How is it with my soul? My soul is in communion with my school and community. My soul, my soul is filled with love. And I share of a friend who runs an organization called Friends and Family of Northwest Indiana. Her name is Desiree. Desiree does an amazing job finding resources throughout the Midwest to get to people in need here in Northwest Indiana and on the south and west sides of Chicago. And as everything has been going on in, in our city and in the city of Chicago, Desiree has faithfully been cheering up her friends, seeking donations, delivering medicine to seniors, delivering food to seniors, making sure that the people in her neighborhoods don't go without, that they're less afraid, that they're loved, that they're mattered, and they're not alone. And through her organization, Friends and Family of Northwest Indiana, God's Spirit is working and alive. The church goes on, and the love of Christ is being shown to the world. This week I sat in conversations with police officers and people of many races. And we began to have honest and open conversations that we may have never had a few weeks ago. We began to talk and discuss how are we called to be brothers and sisters? How are we called to love one another? How are we called to listen and to be together in peace and bring strong, godly leadership to our communities? This past Saturday, I had met with some pastors in Hammond and the surrounding area, and we said, we have to do something. We have to respond. And our bishop, Bishop Trimble, and the Indiana Conference says, pastors, clergy, churches, you must respond. We're called to stand up for the marginalized, the oppressed, those hurting and those in pain. And so what started as a a conversation between, between three or four pastors last week, we called on our churches, on the faith community of Northern Lake County, of Hammond and Whiting and East Chicago, to begin praying together, begin praying for our neighbors, begin praying for our neighborhoods, for to be a people of peace, to be a people who stand up to injustice, who stand up to racism, to be a people of peace when tensions arise in our cities. And so we gathered at City Hall on Saturday morning. Some of you may have saw my Facebook feed. We gathered to pray. 
to gather to march. And we marched to the police station in Hammond. And when we marched peacefully, we stopped at different streets for prayer. We were led by faith leaders in Hammond. I want to thank all the clergy that came out. I want to thank our school leaders, Scott Miller, Dave Verda, Dave Borsitz, Carlotta Blinking, and everyone else who came out. I want to thank our police officers for being there, for sharing, for loving, for standing up with us in our community. And what I saw was beauty on Calumet Avenue. I saw God's people, God's church, sharing the love of Jesus together, united on Calumet Avenue. And that's the only, the beginning. Or we understand that it can't just be a one-time deal, but we need to begin to have a conversation together as a community, building up one another, building up our neighbors, offering programs for our children, bringing people together, forcing our elected officials to make good laws for the benefits of all people. When our neighbors came together, God's spirit was breathing. The church on fire. Last evening, there was a peaceful march from Robertsdale to Whiting. And a lot of people came out, and I felt as a pastor here in Whiting, as a person of peace, that I should be a part of that. And so I walked with our friends and our neighbors, our city officials, as they passed out water and we prayed and we remembered people who have died and people came and they laid flowers in remembrance in honor of lives lost to violence and brutality on the feet of city hall It was a beautiful, peaceful evening here in Whiting. There wasn't even trash left on the floor, ground. Neighbors supporting one another. Water being handed out to the thirsty. God's spirit was breathing. God's spirit is breathing. And as we walked down a street, few people on 119th in Indianapolis screaming out hate, screaming out racial slurs, but the voice of hope, the voice of love, the voice of peace and unity outweighed those small voices of hate. In Hammond earlier in the week, we knew that there were problems that could be coming to 8094, and tension was brewing. People wanted their voices heard. And so I felt the need to pray, God calling me, and I, I got out in my car and drove up and down my streets and the exits in Hammond off of 8094, praying for people, praying for our city. And I got to 175th and Calumet Avenue. 
and saw a couple dozen people out there, some police and riot gear. And I noticed two of my students, my former students from, from Morton. And so I, I parked my car and I got out and I went and stood with them. And I was silently praying for our city. And these were two girls that as freshmen used to real, I love them, but they used to bother me. I was so busy and they would always just like come up at my desk and want to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Uh, and these were great girls. They were, uh, they, they care about their neighborhood. They care about their school. And they were out on 175th and they decided they, that they're creating a young person's newspaper that uh, they want to create an online service for young people in Northwest Indiana and uh, share shares views uh, and share news that's going on. And I was so proud of them and uh, God's spirit again was breathing in there. And there were a couple people from Hope Cafe, our young adult ministry at Hammond Woodmar. And they were out there supporting and cheering on our neighborhood and the people in our neighborhood. And there were a couple teachers standing out there from the city. And so I stood with them and I prayed silently behind them and God was breathing. And I know God's spirit was at work. But on the opposite side of the street, a man was standing with an assault rifle just waiting. I know he was just using his free speech rights as the rest of the neighbors. And I know it's completely legal that a person can stand with an assault rifle on a corner of 175th and Calumet. But when it's my students and teachers and neighbors standing there peacefully on the other side, something is very wrong. It may be very legal, but it's not right. And we should never have to have those images in our head. My friends, we are called to make disciples of Jesus Christ in Matthew 25, how are we doing that? Well, Jesus says, I was hungry. Food. I was thirsty. You gave me something to drink. I was naked. You gave me some clothing. I was sick. You took care of me. I was in prison. You visited me. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. And I know life seems polarizing and tense right now. And there's a lot going on in the world. Some of us are scared to leave our homes. We're still in the midst of a pandemic and we look at the news and see violence and we hear unfounded rumors of violence in our area. But violence has not come here to Hammond. Violence has not come to Whiting in this week because the people of God are praying. And the people of God are loving and the people of God are standing up and saying, no more, it's not okay. And I understand, I don't, I understand we all don't agree on everything. Jesus talks about that too. In Matthew 18, he says, if another member of your church sins against you, go out, point the fault out when the two of you are alone. Listen to each other, right? If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, to take one or two, maybe confirm the evidence. And if, if the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. 
And if the offender refuses to listen to the church, treat him as a Gentile and a tax collector. And what did Jesus do with Gentiles and tax collectors? Jesus healed them. Jesus loved them. Jesus sat down and had a meal with them. Friends, we need to listen. We need to walk humbly. We need to pray boldly. And we need to speak with one another in love. One last story, because I know I'm going long. When I was in my early 20s, Michelle Cobb, the Reverend Michelle Cobb, who was district superintendent for uh, this Calumet area of the United Methodist Church, she took a group of us out to, to Gary, downtown Gary, and we gathered at what's called City Methodist, and we prayed. And for probably once a month after that, for a couple years, I would go and visit City Methodist. When I got to do my senior project at Purdue, I wrote about City Methodist, and I, it's a church that closed in the mid 70s. I went through their archives, uh, and I'll post some photos uh, on Facebook later. This church was built with the city of Gary when it was built. It was approved and planned by Judge Gary. It was funded by U.S. Steel, a million dollar building in the 1920s. Unheard of in Gary, in this area. And they built a church to be a shining example of Christ's light right in downtown Gary on Broadway, across the block from where the Genesis Center is. And at the peak of that church's day, thousands were coming to worship. That church founded Indiana University Northwest. When churches were segregated and the Ku Klux Klan was coming to town, they protested a birth of a nation. They set up, although the churches were segregated, they funded and set up congregations in Gary for African Americans. At one point, this church was leading and caring for its community filled with programs. This church is huge, a block long, with a, a gym, rooftops, tons of classrooms, a beautiful sanctuary. And I was do, as I was doing these projects I, for, on the church, I was going through their church council minutes. The, as the church declined in attendance and finances, how the church council was making decisions. And rather than choose to integrate the church, or rather to give the church to an African American congregation, rather than work together with other churches in the area and neighbors. Even after the best experts in the country were brought in on how to save the church, for whatever reason, City Methodist chose not to open itself to its neighbors, chose not to purposefully integrate. chose to decline 
chose to close. When the city was still filled with people who needed to hear the love of Jesus. And when Michelle Cobb took me there that day, and as I looked to burn up whole like a third world country, broken stained glass windows, caved in roof, a symbol of such beauty in the midst of brokenness. Today, people still go look at City Methodist. It's been photographed all over the internet. It's been filmed for horror movies. And as I went through City Methodist walking and praying years ago, I remember God's voice, the Holy Spirit telling me, Chris, if you say you're a leader, if you say you want to be a minister, you can never allow this to happen again. And this day, I believe with my whole heart, just as I did then, that God is calling us. Never allow that to happen again. Sunday mornings are the most racially segregated hour of the morning in America and church that's not all right. And we need to talk about it. I've seen God's spirit move this week. How is it with my soul? My soul is filled with the love of Jesus. I've seen that love and experienced that love this week. Even right now while I'm here and we've been marching and leading in the community and having conversations with our neighbors, I have friends that are just amazing. They've been doing work on my home, in my yard. It just happened. People I've worked with over the years and seeing God's love through that. So church, thank you for continuing to love, for continuing to support, continuing to let your light shine. May we boldly, with the authority that Christ has given, go to all nations, baptizing, making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Can't wait to be with you and hear how God is working in your life, how God is calling you to walk in the footsteps of Jesus and make a difference here, right in our neighborhood. I'm going to close this morning singing this little light of mine and I have a benediction I'd like to share with you.
light of mine Friends, the world is looking to us, and it's coming off as a really dark place. But we have the light of Christ, the light of love, the Holy Spirit going with us, shining with us, walking, fighting, marching, loving, bringing hope. Till all children know they are beloved children of God. When I felt the call to ministry, it was Bishop Woody White that stood with me. It was Bishop Woody White that preached as I walked down the aisle. And in 1996, Bishop Woody White sat at the General Conference of the United Methodist Church and gave this benediction. And so now, in the words of Woody White, And now may the Lord torment you. May the Lord keep before you the faces of the hungry, the lonely, the rejected, and the despised. May the Lord afflict you with pain for the hurt, the wounded, the oppressed, the abused, the victims of violence. May God grace you with an agony, a burning thirst of justice and righteousness. May the Lord give you courage and strength and compassion to make ours a better world, to make your community a better community, to make your church a better church. And may you do your best to make it so, and after you've done your best, may the Lord grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.